On behalf of the graduates, faculty, staff, and Board of Trustees, it is my privilege to welcome you and everyone watching the 2020 North Arkansas College Commencement Ceremony. Please rise and remain standing for, in the, for the invocation followed by the National Anthem. Dear Heavenly Father, today we thank you for the many blessings of life and thank you for allowing us to gather during these tough times. We thank you for giving our friends and families the opportunity to watch us graduate from afar, and thank you for the support that they provided. I ask that you bless and guide us graduates as we take on new challenges and be with the graduates that were unable to be with us today. Please help us graduates be strong in our new beginnings and kind in our upcoming futures. Bless us graduates as we continue to pursue our dreams outside of these walls. I ask that you provide us with courage to overcome our fears and doubts and bless us with generosity in the hard times that we may face. In closing, I want to thank you for the wonderful faculty and staff here at North Arkansas College. I ask that you bless them in their next year's teaching and guide them, guide them through these difficult times. Bless this ceremony and be with us as we graduate. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. We are very proud to announce the student speaker. North Arkansas professors have selected Bethany Amerson to deliver the student commencement address. Thank you. The invocation was presented by Hannah Weaver of Bergman. Hannah is the daughter of Cynthia and Andy Carboni and Brad Weaver. She will receive an Associates of Science in Education degree. I'd like to echo Hannah in welcoming students and faculty to North Arc's 2020 graduation. I can't tell you how much I've missed seeing your faces. Well, at least half of your faces. I first want to start off by congratulating my peers for all of the hard work and dedication that has brought you to this grand moment of excellence. It has been an honor to grow and to learn with all of you here today. Amongst us are parents, athletes, and first-generation graduates. And I know that we have all had a unique set of obstacles to overcome that has brought us to this day. And I know that while our friends and family could not be here with us today, they are so proud of us. We have proved to ourselves and to them that we are capable of accomplishing great feats. Some of you will be moving on to universities, and others will be entering into the workforce. Regardless of your path, we stand here together on the precipice of our future. And I want to challenge all of you to take hold of the opportunities that lay before you and have the courage to be bold. And I challenge you to constantly be working toward being kind and joyful in all the things that you do. The world will not always be kind and we will all face challenges. But my hope is that you treat the obstacles in life as opportunities. 
opportunities to be humbled, to shift your way of thinking, or to create a stronger, better version of yourself. And my heart is heavy to close this chapter here, but I know that the future is bright for all of us. Our time here at North Arkansas College has come to an end, and I want to thank our teachers that have delivered us with the knowledge and skills to take on the next chapter of our lives. The faculty and staff here at North Ark are very special to me. I have come to know and to love them. They have been the best instructors and some of my most valued friends. I also want to thank my family for encouraging me in all the things that I do and for supporting me throughout my pursuit of higher education. Finally, and most importantly, I want to thank God for bringing us all here together to this moment. I know that without his guidance and mercy, I would not be standing before you all today. And as I stand here, looking out at all of you, I can feel myself reminiscing on the little moments that we've shared together. And I can be joyful in the fact that I am leaving this college with something much more valuable than my degree. I leave here with a new family. I think that most of us can agree that because of North Ark, we will leave this campus as better leaders, better friends, and better people. Congratulations, class of 2020. We did it. Now, I'd like to introduce to you all Dr. Randy Esters, president of North Arkansas College. Thank you, Bethany. That was graduating sophomore Bethany Amerson of Harrison. She will receive an Associate of Science in Business and is transferring to the Sam M. Walton College of Business. Bethany is the daughter of Brenda and Ricky Lee Amerson of Harrison. And I want to join her this morning in welcoming you to this very special occasion, not only those of you who are here this morning, but also all of you who are joining us remotely. And I want to acknowledge that we had a little over 200 graduates uh, scheduled and many are working many had other commitments so I want to make sure that we include them in our congratulations as we go through the ceremony today this is an institution has been dedicated to your success and part of that success is driven by an outstanding board of trustees and we appreciate them we're grateful to our trustees for all their efforts and I'd like to introduce them to you this morning please hold your applause uh, until they all, have all been introduced and I'm going to ask them to stand there sitting behind me. I'll ask them to stand as their names are called. R.G. Arnis, our chair. Scott Miller, who's not here this morning. Sarah Newman. Bill Lovell. David Evans. Sarah Jo Finley. Chris McNew. Kevin Cherie and Don Tomlinson. Let's give them a round of applause. And I can tell you, talking with my peers, I, they talk about their board and, and some of the issues they have with their board. And I can tell you that North Ark is blessed to have the board that we have because they are always their first question to me when I bring a situation to them is how does this affect students? And that's what we want in board members. I'd also like to introduce a few other important guests. Uh, please stand as your name's called. They're also seated behind me. Uh, this, is, this will be the president's cabinet. And I get a lot of folks say how successful the opening has been and how much planning has gone into it. And folks want to or tend to congratulate me. But I want you to know and I want everybody to know that I'm a small part of a great team. And the folks that I'm going to introduce now are the members of that team who take the, the voices of all of the faculty and staff and all the employees and students. They take those voices and they bring them to meetings. And we share and we listen and we make decisions based on that. So I, I just want to brag on the team that we have of leadership for your college. So I'm going to start with Dr. Rick Massengill, the Vice President for Academic and Student Affairs. Where you at, Rick? There you are. 
Dr. Rodney Arnold, Vice President of Institutional Advancement. Mr. Richard Seip, Vice President, Finance and Administration. And Tavonda Brown, who is Dean of Students. Let's give them all a round of applause. Now, because of the shift in the way we've done this, uh, I'm your speaker for the day. I'm sorry, I apologize in advance. <laughs> we are restreaming this and we're also recording it, and we want to make sure that everybody has access to your celebration. And I know that you went from struggling every day to get to class, to study, to get your homework done, to all of those normal things, to in the blink of an eye, trying to fight for an internet connection, trying to make sure you have a camera that works, trying to make sure that your computer will boot up properly. And you know what I find ironic? If I'm playing on Facebook, or if I'm looking up the next best coon hound, or if I'm looking up something that has no importance at all, my computer works beautifully. But the moment that I need to get on to an important meeting, or the moment I have to participate in a class, guess what? Solar flare, somebody cuts the line, <laughs> A car runs into the pole, something happens. So we know that we've had all of those struggles. You've also tried to find a, a quiet place to study or to a quiet place to have class where your little brothers and sisters don't run through the room naked and everybody sees them on Zoom. We've, it's happened. <laughs> You've tried to interpret those emails from your instructors that they understood but you didn't quite get what they were trying to tell you. And you've also had to send emails to your instructors confirming that you did send that email that's still lost in cyberspace somewhere. So we know that a lot has happened. And then you take all of this COVID stuff that's going on and you throw in riots and civil discourse and social upheavals and what a year 2020 has been. Jeez. And then we got the political environment. Elections are coming up. And y'all, sometime I think I'm watching an episode of Jerry Springer instead of a <laughs> politics. I'm not sure what's going on with all that, but I keep waiting for an ad to come on saying Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. So, yeah. So I promise I'm not going to speak long. I'm going I'm to use other people's words and other thoughts to convey a message to you, and I hope it's, it's, not, uh, it's not off base. The first quote is from John Wesley, who was the founder of Methodism, and he was the first one to write, we have to agree to disagree. You've all heard that. Well, John Wesley is the one who was the first to write it. Here's his quote. Though we cannot think alike, may we not love alike. May we not be of one heart, though we are not of one opinion. Without all doubt, we may. Herein all the children of God may unite, notwithstanding these smaller differences. I want you to do an imagine trick with me this morning. I want you to imagine a line going this way, okay? Here's the end of the line. I want you to write the word love on this one and then draw a line after that. Write the word complacency and then go a little further down and write, draw another line and write the word hate. Okay, so you've got a line with three parts of it. Love, complacency, and hate. And each of those lines that's up and down, those vertical lines, I'm going to call those, they are different lines. Where does someone have to fit to go into either of those thirds? In other words, how different does somebody have to be from you before they go into the complacency line? And complacency means live and let live. Doesn't mean you don't care, it just means live and let live. How different do they have to be before they cross from love to complacency? And then how different do they have to be from you before they go from complacency, live and let live, to I hate that person? Where does that have to be? I'll give you an example. I have a son who is mentally and physically challenged. He is very different than everybody in here. Where does he fit on that line for you? What if his skin was a little darker? Where would he fit on that line? What if one of my kids, and I'm thinking about myself now, what if one of my kids 
maybe decided to change religions, would that move them from one third to the next? What if one of them went broke and were poor? Would that move them? What if they were gay? Would that move them? You know, what, how different does a person have to be to move from love to complacency to hate? What does it take? Now I can tell you, you said, some of you said, oh yeah, but that's your kids, it's different. You love them. Exactly my point. I can tell you that if you invest in getting to know people as human beings, if you invest in getting to know people as people, instead of as a cause, they're going to take a different position on that spectrum that we've been talking about. That line will move. And I can also guarantee you that if you invest more time in trying to love people, if you invest more time in trying to get to know people as people, instead of as a religion or a skin color or, or, or a doctrine or whatever it is, you get to know them as a people, the chances that they'll stay in that positive zone is better. Now I'm going to tell you something, and I may get in trouble for this one, but I'm going to say it anyway. Small-minded people do not tolerate most others, but most others do not tolerate small-minded people. And folks, that's going to affect your profession. If you go to an interview and your boss or that whoever's interviewing sees that you're a small-minded person, your chance of professional success is going to decrease. The next is not a quote. The next one is a, a proverb, an African proverb that I heard when I was working in Tanzania. And it says, drop by drop, the drops become a river. You're one person. Every one of you is one person. So that means your vote and your opinion, your actions, your example, your legacy, that doesn't count, right? Because you're only one person. That is so wrong. Everything starts with one person, drop by drop. Let's look at this COVID nonsense that we're, I mean, that we're dealing with. That started with one person who was infected with a virus, who infected other people, who infected other people, who infected other people, and now we have a global pandemic because of one person. And you know, I'm told that once this pandemic, this virus gets in a household, it's, it's very difficult to keep it from the other members of the household, that everybody in the household is going to be infected. Well, there's other things that are more contagious than COVID or any other virus. Some of those things are complacency and hate and violence. Those are terribly contagious. But you know what's also contagious, even more so than that? Love, peace, tolerance, civility. Treating each other with respect. A virus, you have to be in close contact. But those things that I just talked about, love, respect, all of those things, those can be transmitted and are contagious across oceans and spread at the speed of light. Your individual actions are contagious. And just like that virus where it spreads in a household, all of the things I just mentioned spread in your household. If you express hate every day, your brothers, your sisters, your aunts, everybody in that household, it's going to be contagious. But if you express love and tolerance and respect, those things are contagious as well. And finally, I want to tie this all together with a quote that these folks will know because I used it last week. It's from the great and wise Bob Marley, who probably stoned when he said it, but he said it anyway. You never know how strong you are until being strong is your only choice. You never know how strong you are until being strong is your only choice. We know this world is changing and 2020 is a little bit different because it's changed more than, well, than more than I can remember. And you know we're really tired. If any of you are under the misconception that this is the way we want it to do graduation, we want it to distance and we want to wear masks and we want to check temperatures, if any of you believe that any of us want this, then you are badly mistaken. We want normal. We want it to be able to get together and I want it to be able to hug your necks. I mean, there's folks out here that I got really close to over the last two years. And it's difficult not hugging your necks. 
But it is what it is. It, it, we are where we are. We're here. We can't socialize the way we need to. We can't be with our friends. But we're still working. We're still learning. We're still caring. We're still making a difference. And we're still being strong because that's the only choice we have. You know, this season of uncertainty, it's going to end, hopefully sooner rather than later. We're hoping that by the first of the year we have some, some solutions to some of these problems. And we're going to be in a position, and you're going to be the decision makers to put things back together because it's been torn apart. And when I think about putting things back together like our communities and our families and our extended families, my little mind goes to our library. Y'all were here when we tore apart the library. It started out changing some windows. And that $13,000 job of changing up some windows turned into nearly a million dollar expense. And y'all, when, when Kevin Summers came in and told me that it's gonna, this is the problem and it's going to cost this much, I'm not sure if it's possible to swallow your tongue, but I think I did. We had a choice to make. And we, as a community, as, a, as the North Ark family, we came together and we said, do we want to put this thing together the way it is or the way it was, just fix the problems, put it back? Or do we want to reinvent it to make it better and stronger and more alive? And we chose to make it better. So if you were here before and you know the old library and you know the new library, we took something that was a little outdated, that had some issues, we tore it all apart, then we put it back together and we saved what was good, we saved the relics that were valuable, and we threw out the stuff that wasn't. We made that place more people friendly and more alive. And you graduates are in that unique position with this situation. It's been torn apart. This world has been torn apart. You, your generation, you graduates, have the opportunity to put it back together and how are you going to put it back together? Are you going to build it bigger, better, stronger? Are you going to throw out the stuff that is bad? But I want to warn you, or maybe just give you a, a word of caution, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. There are things that we want to keep. There are things like, I don't know, like respecting our elders like respecting our heroes. You know, those are things that matter that were old, that are from the past, that maybe we need to bring out and we need to dust off and, and reintroduce. So what kind of changes? Maybe we need to cut down on our travel time, use the technology we've learned or been forced to learn with Zoom to cut down travel time so we can spend more time with our families. That's maybe, maybe that's something we can, we can redo. Maybe we can learn to appreciate, finally, the unquestionable value of a hug or a handshake. Maybe those are some things that we need to bring back after we rebuild this place. History is going to judge every generation. Some will be judged more critically than others. My hope and my prayer for you is that you are the next greatest generation that you choose discourse over division. You've got no other choice but to be strong. And you've proven you're strong by accomplishing what you've accomplished this past year. But you need to be stronger than you ever thought you could be. You're not through yet. You need to be more determined than you could have ever phantom. You'll have challenges. You'll have opportunities. You have great opportunities. Don't squander them. Rebuild this thing the way that it needs to be done. And I'm going to wrap it up by asking you. No, I'm going to wrap it up by begging you to be strong, be moral, and be united. Thank you. Next on our program is the moment you've all been waiting for, the presentation and confirmation of the candidates for graduation by Dr. Rick Massengill, Vice President for Academic and Student Affairs, 
and our board chair, R.G. Ernest. I want to take just a second before we get into the part that you're here for, and uh, wow, what a powerful message. And I would like to say you're my first graduating class as, as VP here at North Ark, and I can't think of a better group that I would want to be associated with than this one. I mean, I look out here and I see fighters, and I don't mean physical fighters. You overcome. Uh, it would have been easy to fold. It would have been easy to say, hey, I'll take a gap year. I, I'll put it off for a year. But, but you, you saw the challenge. And, and I have a saying, that, and my faculty have heard this, and I have the distinct honor of representing the faculty this morning. We never fear our opponent, but we respect them. You respected it, you overcome, I commend you, and I'm so proud of every one of you. Um, no, thank you for that, Dr. Massengill. This is, um, this is certainly an out of the ordinary uh, commencement, and I, I am very proud of, of all of you and, and everything that you have overcome. All right, as I said, I have the distinct privilege of representing the faculty and staff at uh, North Art, and I'm going to go off script, but this is, that's who I am. I would like to ask the faculty and staff if you've had any part in touching these students, please stand with me while we confer their degrees. Students and degree candidates, would you please stand? Chair Ernest, the following students standing before you and degree candidates have completed the course of study as prescribed by the Board of Trustees as administered by the faculty. And it's my honor to respectfully present them to you for degree. Thank you. Now the Board of Trustees, upon recommendation of the administration and the faculty, certifies that you have satisfactorily completed the various course requirements in your academic disciplines. By virtue of the authority vested in North Arkansas College by the state of Arkansas, I hereby bestow upon you your respective certificates and degrees, and certify that you are all entitled they're entitled to all rights, honors, and privileges thereof. I congratulate our graduates on this accomplishment and wish you all well in the future. You may be seated, and we will begin presenting the degrees and certificates. Thank you. Our first graduates this morning have earned the Associate of Arts degree. Rebecca Filkins. Krista French. Christy Lynn Godat. Rosalind Helen Haley. Creighton Dwayne Henry. Logan Holman. Amy Lynn Rosario. Brooklyn Schmelter.
Caitlin Lee Sims. Hannah Jane Smith. Betsy M. Warren. Associate of Science Business, Bethany Amerson. Brandy Gatlin. Brandy is also receiving an Associate of General Studies. Deontay Johnson. Associate of Science Education, Clady R. Ivaska. Michelle Ann Martin. Michelle is also receiving an Associate of Arts and General Studies. Hannah LaJean Weaver. Hannah is also receiving an Associate of Arts. Associate of General Studies, Tony Butler. Abby Fowler. Jordan Phillips. Our next graduates have earned the Associate of Applied Science degree. I will announce the occupational area in which each group of graduates has earned their degree, beginning with Business Administration. Lakin Madewell Chambers. Amanda Estep. Crystal Lynn Kendall. Jennifer McMillan. Jennifer has also received certificates in accounting, office administration, and small business management. Morgan Alexandria Shields. Criminal Justice, Gerald T. Richter and Terry Richter. General Technology, Benjamin J. Chapman. Benjamin has also received a certificate in small business management. Information Technology, Digital Media, Anne Jeanette Kathleen Cole. Joelle Blair Gribben. Radiologic Technology, Kara Marie Calhoun. Cassie J. Hale. Lane Hilliard. Nolana Johnson.
J.C. B. Keister, Keesler. Crystal Denise Kunsel. Stephane Marie White. Registered Nursing, Erica Shea Lamar. Our next graduates have earned technical certificates. I will announce the occupational area in which each group of graduates has earned their certificate. Heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, Melissa Brown. Practical Nursing, April D. McGehee. April has also received a certificate in medical assistant. Marion O'Layer. Our next graduates have earned certificates of proficiency. Nursing assistant, Marlon Herrera de Leon. Ulyssa Ortiz Lorenzo. Talia Spiva. Phlebotomy technician, Shannon M. Bryant. And now graduates, please rise, move your tassels from the right side to the left side to signify that you are now graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, I now present to you the 2020 graduating class of North Arkansas College. Congratulations. Graduates, you may be seated. In a moment, we'll hear the benediction. The benediction will be presented by Lane G. Hilliard of Harrison. Lane is the son of Christy and Shannon Hilliard. Shane received an Associate of Science in Rad Tech today. And the benediction will conclude our commencement. Uh, once the benediction is through, the marshals will excuse attendees by row. So if you'll just be, stay seated until you're dismissed. Lane. Please join me in a word of prayer. For my Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you. Thank you for letting us all be here today. I want to say thank you for North Arkansas College for being such a big blessing for me and my peers' lives. Please be with us for all of our next steps in life and the many obstacles we will face. Thank you for all the lifelong friendships and the people that you put in our lives to help us succeed. Please use us as a lantern in this dark world, all for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> 